Okay, so um, you probably know where I ended up, seeing as I'm at a low-carb conference. But um, I think it's one of those uh, journeys where the journey is actually more interesting than the destination. What did I learn on the road? And uh, had to ask myself some fairly fundamental questions about how, if I don't believe the uh, establishment and I don't believe um, certain things, then how do I make decisions? And I think that's something that we're all going to grapple with if we um, uh, end up uh, not believing exactly what the um, establishment tells us. So here's just a few little rules of thumb that I uh, use. Uh, so let's look at what is epidemiology, big word, basically medical statistics. Um, how did it help me on the road? Uh, so this is what I exited medical school with and I was busy uh, preaching this to all my patients in coronary care when I was a junior doctor, um, trying to get them to increase their carbohydrate intake, reduce their fat intake, particularly bads the saturated fat, get your fistful of carbohydrates. Um, and then when I started questioning things, I thought, well, where did this come from? Where was this evidence uh, from? Uh, and it turns out that it's from test tube stuff where we've decided that actually if you burn carbs and protein in a test tube, you get roughly half the energy that you get from fat, and that little bit of nugget of knowledge has been very, very influential. Um, however, the body's a little bit more uh, complex than that, and it's important from an epidemiologist's point of view to know how that policy plays out in the real world. So what do I do now? Well, it's the old keto diet, right? We're pushing in the other direction, uh, increasing fat, reducing carbohydrate. Well, how did we get there? Uh, how did I change? Well, certain things, um, here's a, 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 an idiot's guide to epidemiology. Um, it's, I think of it basically as a bit like a car race. Um, in a car race, we might be racing our, I don't know, BMWs and Porsches. And we want to know, on average, is one car faster than the other? Well, in epidemiology, it's similar, but we have two exposures, or maybe more than two, uh, rather than cars. And we want to know, on average, is one diet better than another in terms of improving our health? And this is, uh, there's lots of sort of models of causation, but this is my model, uh, which is fairly basic. Um, the blocks I consider to be beliefs, and the holes are the scientific evidence. And so our job is to try and fit the beliefs with the scientific evidence. And if we end up having to use a hammer to get our block in the hole, uh, we're in trouble. And that's what I thought most of my colleagues in the university were doing. But uh, I soon found that that's actually not the norm. It's, uh, and particularly if you've got a professional degree that goes with it and you think you know stuff, um, most professionals are loyal to the majority consensus. And if they're challenged, they'll return to that rather than the numbers. So my first piece of advice is forget about the crowd, start looking at the numbers. And it was very heartwarming to see Penny uh, steal my thunder about how you go about doing that. <laughs> um, so some of the uh, statistical evidence that pushed me in the low carb direction. Uh, here's a recent meta-analysis. I generally want to go to the top shelf of epidemiological evidence, so I'll look at uh, trials generally rather than observational studies. I want to look at the best evidence, not just any evidence that happens to suit my hypothesis. 
And here we've got four plots where we've looked at various low-carb trials and seen, on average, uh, who does better uh, when we assess various metrics, such as the change in uh, uh, energy intake, which you can see on the left-hand side, you can see, on average, plotting a line through that. We call that a regression line in epidemiology, which basically is just a moving average. Uh, and we see that uh, focusing on calories or energy doesn't make much of a difference. What happens when we increase the proportion of energy from fat? We see this negative association, so more fat, more weight loss. We all know that. And what about carbohydrate? Increased carbohydrate, less weight loss. And uh, on the other side, we see increasing protein, more weight loss, but the slope is rather less dramatic than the fat or the carbohydrate. So uh, one of the ideas that has been influential in trying to sort out the wheat from the chaff in uh, nutritional science is think of it like going to visit your mechanic. How do you know your mechanic's done a good job? Well, one of the things that I think of is, have they uh, reversed the problem? <laughs> if the problem's gone away, they've probably identified the cause. And that was what one of the fathers of epidemiology came up with, Austin Bradford Hill, and he has a list of criteria but I think they're quite well summarized by this idea of reversibility. Uh, and that's powerful evidence that you've addressed the cause. And of course, that's why we're all here. And we've heard talks about uh, low carb keto approaches, uh, reversing all these parameters that doctors fret over, uh, metabolic syndrome in summary. Uh, so, uh, more and more evidence, and we see this nice dose response. So less carbohydrate on the right, we see restriction leading to improved metabolic health, and on the other side, more carbohydrate <coughs> leading to poor metabolic health, higher blood pressure, uh, higher glucoses, atheroma in the arteries, and it getting better with the other approach. Now, one of the uh, issues I have is that um, that's great, but uh, you'll get um, your colleagues telling you, no, it's all about saturated fat. Oh, we've got to get rid of the saturated fat. So well, that's OK. Let's have a look at the evidence. And so here's the top shelf evidence on saturated <laughs> fat. And we see a low saturated fat diet compared to usual care. Uh, we summarize a whole bunch of studies in a thing called a meta-analysis just by taking a weighted average, and we see absolutely no benefit from swapping out saturated fat for other fats. Uh, a, an odds, a pooled odds ratio of 0 0.97, and no uh, statistical difference from a chance finding. So looking at the alternative hypotheses around is uh, also very useful. Uh, and this has um, been immensely helpful for me, looking at other scientific conundrums. OK, and so then I, I look at, well, do we consistently see this beneficial effect? And here's another meta-analysis or summary of various low-carb trials, and we see particularly uh, early on uh, good weight loss, consistent evidence of good weight loss. Uh, at two years, the effect uh, tails off, and I think um, that's something that we need to get our heads around, and I, I think that's, uh, to me, it's an issue of addiction, car uh, carbohydrate addiction, and uh, needing to keep the main, uh, maintain the weight loss is, is, is difficult. We also see evidence that other 
cardiovascular parameters improve, so systolic blood pressure, which has also been um, mentioned. What about biological plausibility? Do we have an explanation for why it's beneficial? And I think we've heard that from uh, our previous speakers, but you know, the centrality of insulin seems like uh, a logical choice here, that uh, reducing insulin coming off the uh, medication uh, reducing the secretion is uh, very important in terms of switching on or off our fat burning ability. So uh, I guess for me the major message here is that science in a nutshell is about recalibrating our beliefs to reality. One of the few things I remember about the psychiatry lectures in my uh, med-school training was that uh, neurosis is building castles in the sky and psychosis is living in them. <laughs> and that's what we're trying to avoid um, at all costs. Uh, uh, Low-carb and keto ticks all the causal epidemiological boxes for me. Uh, reversal is, a pow is powerful evidence for causation, so look for it in the scientific studies that you're looking at. Uh, biological theories are one thing, but epidemiology asks the question, does it work in the real world? And that's what we want to know. So thank you very much.